Comius was a historical king of the Belgic nation of the Atrebates, initially in Gaul, then in Britain, in the 1st century BC, ally of Caesar. When Julius Caesar conquered the Atrebates in Gaul in 57 BC, as recounted in his commentary Idabello Gallico, he appointed Comius as king of the tribe. Before Caesar's first expedition to Britain in 55 BC, Camillus was sent as Caesar's envoy to persuade the Britons not to resist him, as Caesar believed he would have influence on the island. However, he was arrested as soon as he arrived. When the Britons failed to prevent Caesar from landing, Camillus was handed over as part of the negotiations. Camillus was able to provide a small detachment of cavalry from his tribe to help Caesar defeat further British attacks. During Caesar's second expedition to Britain Camillus negotiated the surrender of the British leader Cassivellaunus. He remained Caesar's loyal client through the Gaulish revolts of 54 BC, and in return Caesar allowed the Atrebates to remain independent and exempt from tax, and in addition appointed Camius to rule the Marini. However, this loyalty was not to last, as related by Aulus Hirtius in the final book of the De Bello Gallico, written after Caesar's death. While Caesar was in size Alpine Gaul in the winter of 53, the legate Titus Labianus believed that Camius had been conspiring against the Romans with other Gaulish tribes. Labianus sent a tribune, Gaius Volusinus Quadratus, and some centurions to summon Camius to a sham meeting at which they would execute him for his treachery, but Camius escaped with a severe head wound. He vowed never again to associate with Romans. Enemy of Caesar, in 52 BC the Atrebates joined the Pan-Gaulish revolt led by Vercingetorix, and Camius was one of the leaders of the army that attempted to relieve Vercingetorix at the siege of Alesia. After Vercingetorix was defeated Camius joined a revolt by the Bellavaci and persuaded some 500 Germans to support them. But this too was defeated and Camius sought refuge with his German allies. In 51 BC he returned to his homeland with a small mounted war band for a campaign of agitation and guerrilla warfare. When the two groups of horsemen met Volusinus was victorious but sustained a spear wound to the thigh. Camius escaped and sued for peace through intermediaries. He offered hostages and promised he would live where he was told and no longer resist Caesar, on the condition that he never again had to meet a Roman. Antony granted his petition. A 1st century AD source, Sextus Julius Frontinus's Stratagem Arta, tells how Camius fled to Britain with a group of followers with Caesar in pursuit. When he reached the English Channel the wind was in his favour but the tide was out, leaving the ships stranded on the flats. Camius ordered the sails raised anyway. Caesar, following from a distance, assumed they were afloat and called off the pursuit. This suggests that the truce negotiated with Antony broke down and hostilities resumed between Camius and Caesar. However John Creighton suggests that Camius was sent to Britain as a condition of his truce with Antony, where better to ensure that he never again met a Roman, and that Frontinus's anecdote either refers to an escape prior to the truce, or is historically unreliable. Perhaps a legend Frontinus heard while governor of Britain. Creighton argues that Camius was in fact set up as a friendly king in Britain by Caesar, and his reputation was rehabilitated by blaming his betrayal on Labianus. Camius's name appears on coins of post-conquest date in Gaul, paired with either Garmanos or Carcisios. This suggests he continued to have some power in Gaul in his absence, perhaps ruling through regents. Alternatively, Garmanos and Carcisios may have been Camius's sons who noted their father's name on their own coins. King in Britain By about 30 BC Camius had established himself as king of the Atrebates in Britain, and was issuing coins from Caliva Atrebatum. It is possible that Camius and his followers founded this kingdom, although the fact that, when Caesar was unable to bring his cavalry to Britain in 55 BC, Camius was able to provide a small detachment of horsemen from his people. 
suggests that there were already a tree baits in Britain at this time. Coins marked with his name continued to be issued until about 20 BC, and some have suggested, based on the length of his floor route, that there may have been two kings, father and son, of the same name. However, if Camius was a young man when appointed by Caesar he could very well have lived until 20 BC. Some coins of this period are stamped com c o m m i o s, which, if interpreted as Camius son of Camius, would seem to support the two kings theory. Three later kings, Tinkamarus, Epilus and Verica, are named on their coins his sons of Camius. From about 25 BC Camius appears to have ruled in collaboration with Tinkamarus. After his death Tinkamarus appears to have ruled the northern part of the kingdom from Caliva, while Epilus ruled the southern part from Novi Omegas. Epilus became sole ruler California. AD 7 Verica succeeded him about 15, and ruled until shortly before the Roman conquest of 43. Popular culture and fiction French Nobel laureate Anatoly France wrote a lengthy short story about the Romanization of Belgic Gaul from the point of view of Camaius, whose name he recasts in Germanic form as Com. The story, Com of the Atribates, appears in France's historical fiction collection Clio and can be read in English translation online. Camaius appeared in the 2001 French movie Versing Etorix.